Mr. Carrillo paid a total of $9.27 for three items at a grocery store. He paid $3.84 for a gallon of milk. He paid $4 for a pound of hamburger meat. Find A, the amount Mr. Carrillo paid for the third item he bought. I know it says find A, but remember, they're never actually asking you to find a letter. It always stands for something. In this case, A is the amount that he paid for the third item. So they're telling us a few things. Number one, Mr. Carrillo went to the grocery store and at the end, he had to pay $9.27 for the three things he bought. $9.27. And he bought three things. The first thing he thought, sorry, first thing he bought, he didn't just think of these things. He actually needed them. They went to the store and the first thing that he bought was milk. I put M for milk. And he had to pay $3.84. Okay. The second thing he bought was hamburger meat. I'm going to put an H for hamburger meat. It says he paid $4. Four doesn't have a decimal. What can I do? Bella, what can I do if the four doesn't have a decimal? Um, you add two zeros. Well, I can add two zeros and that's okay, but. And then add the decimal. Over here? Mm -mm. Where? Um, in the middle of four. So I need to add a decimal and then two zeros. So there's the hamburger meat. Four decimal zero zero. The third thing, we don't know. We don't know what it was that he bought and we don't know how much it cost. How can I figure out how much he had to pay for the third thing. Aiden, what can I do? You could you could add the milk and the hamburgers together and then subtract the total from it. Okay. I could do that. So let's try that. We're gonna put the milk and the hamburger together. Well, I mean the prices. We're not actually going to pour milk into hamburgers. But we're going to add the prices together. And then, like you said, we're going to subtract it from the total. And we'll get to see how much that last thing was. So let's start by adding those two. The milk plus the hamburger. Again, what is the first thing I need to make sure that I do when I'm adding or subtracting decimals? Noah, first thing I need to make sure I do is line up your decimals. Line up your decimals. So let's do that. One decimal for the milk. One decimal for the hamburger. One decimal for my answer. Jaden said we're gonna add these. So Three point eight four plus four point zero zero. All right, let's start adding. Four plus zero is what? What would I get? Bella? Four. Four. Eight plus zero is what? Alexa? What's the question? Eight plus zero is what? 
8. 3 plus 4 is what? Shading? Me? Mm -hmm. Seven. Seven. Seven point eight four. Is that my answer, Jadine? No, because you still have to subtract nine point twenty seven. I've got to subtract it from the total. So let's go ahead and again, we're going to start off. By lining up the decimals. I have two numbers plus one more decimal for my answer. The total was 9.27. The number we have for the milk and for the hamburger minus 7.84. Let's do our subtraction. What is 7 minus 4? Bella? 3. What is 2 minus 8? Bailey? You can hear, hear me, right? Yep. Okay. You can't subtract it. So what do I do? You would go into the, the, um, the neighbor next door, I like to say that. Okay. And take away one, and that would turn into eight. Okay. And give it to the 2, All right. and that would be 12. Okay, what's 12 minus 8 then? 12 minus 8 is 4. 4, okay. Need me to mute you? No, oh, you got it. Yay! Okay, 8 minus 7. What's 8 minus 7? Christopher. One. One. Christopher, is this my answer? Yes. Yes. And what answer choice does it match, Christopher? Answer choice H. Answer choice H. One dollar forty-three cents. Very good. All right. So, remember, honestly, sometimes we make mistakes with addition or subtraction. It happens. Everyone makes mistakes. But the most common mistake I see people make on a test like this is not lining up their decimals. If you line up your decimals, about half of your problems will be solved. Then you just have to be careful with the addition or the subtraction. Question three. Ooh, this looks like the number lines we were working with yesterday. The model below represents the length of two screwdrivers. Okay, so here's a little screwdriver. Here's the big screwdriver. They don't tell us how long they are. So let's figure that out. I can see that like yesterday, I have my number line, and I can see that some of the parts have labels, some of the lines have labels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But those little lines in the middle, they don't have labels. Yesterday, when we worked on our number lines, we saw that sometimes the number lines can count using decimals. And sometimes, they can count either by 0.1, they can count by 0.2, or they can count by 0.5. Question 
or they can even count by 0.5. Let's try them out. Let's see which one makes sense. Okay? So we'll start at the beginning. Zero, and we'll see. We'll, we'll try 0.5 and see if it makes sense using 0.5. Zero, 0 0.5, one. Would it make sense to count by 0.5 here? Jadine? No, it wouldn't because it's not counting by five. It's not counting by five because the one is, should be way over here. And if I count by fives, the one's going to be right here. Okay, so I can't count by fives. Let's try by twos then. Zero. 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1. Okay, does it make sense to count by twos then? What do you say, Noah? Does it make sense to count by twos here? Mm, no. No. Because again, my 1 is over here. But if I count by twos, my one will be right here. Okay, let's count by one then. We'll try that out. Zero, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, one. Does it make sense to count by ones here? Christopher? Yes. Yes. Okay, so each one of the little lines is a tenth point one. So let's look at the small screwdriver first. It went past two centimeters, but it didn't get all the way to three. So let's count the little lines in between and see how long it is. So here's two. 2.1, 2 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6. That's where my arrow is pointing. So the little screwdriver is 2.6 centimeters. We're going to try the same thing, but this time with the big screwdriver. I can see the big screwdriver got way past three, it went past four, went past five, but didn't get past six. Let's see where the big screwdriver stops. Here's five. Five point one, five point two, five point three. That's where my arrow is pointing. So my big screwdriver is 5.3 centimeter. And the problem says, what is the difference between the lengths of the two screwdrivers in centimeters? What operation should I use if they're asking or a difference. Bella, if they say they want a difference, what operation is that? Um, subtraction. Subtraction. Whenever they say they want a difference, they're asking you to subtract. So I need to subtract my numbers. What is the first thing I need to make sure that I do, Jaylene? What should I do, Jaylene, before I start doing my subtraction or anything else? What is the first thing I need to make sure that I do when I add or subtract de decimals? What was the question again? What is the first thing that I need to make sure that I do whenever I add or subtract decimals? Um, line up your decimals. 
line up the decimals. So let's do that. There's my line. I have two numbers plus one more for my answer. Bella said that difference means subtract, so let's subtract. 2.6 minus 5.3. I don't have any problems. All my numbers are lined up. I don't have to add anything else. Before I go on, though, I do want to write down that note that Bella told us because it is important. Difference means subtract. So if I see a problem asking for a difference, they're telling me you need to subtract. So let's do our subtraction. 6 minus 3 is what? Kylie? 3. 3. And 2 minus 5 is what? 2. Kylie? You can't do that. I can't do that and I can't borrow. So if I'm subtracting, what do I need to make sure that I do, Kylie? You need to make sure you have the biggest number at the top and the smallest number at the bottom. Very good. Whenever you subtract, when you're adding, it doesn't matter. But whenever you're subtracting, you need to make sure that when you put your numbers here, you make sure to put whatever number is bigger up on top. I'm going to write that again. Five. Point three minus two point six. And now that I put the big number on top, I can finish off my answer. I can actually do my subtraction. Alexa, what is three minus six? Oh you can't do that, so you have to borrow from the five. Okay, so if I borrow from the five, what's gonna happen? The 5 is going to turn into a 4, and the okay. 3 is going to turn into a 13. Okay. What's 13 minus 6? Seven. 7. What's 4 minus 2? Bailey? 2. Oh, that's okay. So 2. All right. So Bailey, tell me. Which one of my answer choices matches the answer I got? B. B. 2.7. And check out what they did, Bailey. They have two answer choices that look similar. They have 2.3 and 3.7. So they are looking and trying to see maybe if I put one that looks close, maybe they'll pick it by accident. But they didn't get you. You saw the right one. Could, could you mute this again? Because it's not letting me again. Sure. Maybe you just got to start asking it nicely, baby. Please. Please. <laughs> okay. Last practice problem that we're doing together. Henry had $40. Oh my gosh. Henry is rich. 40 bucks. He bought a soccer ball for $14.64 and a water bottle for $7.55. Complete the strip diagram to show how to find M, the amount of money Henry had then. So this is almost like that first problem. Okay, Henry starts off with $40. That 40 doesn't have a decimal. What do I do? Christopher? Put the decimal in the middle of the four. So where do I put it? In the middle of the four. Do I put it here, 4.0? Yes. Is 4.0 the same as 40? 
Yes. So if I have this and that, that would be the same? That's, this is how I see $40 on a cash register or anything like that? No. No. You're right. I do have to add a decimal, but where does it go? After the zero? After the zero. Remember, any time. And I'll write that down as a note, too. That's an important thing to know. When you add... A decimal put it at the end and I'm gonna underline that part at the end you never just throw a decimal in the middle of the number if you do it would have changed from Henry having forty dollars to Henry having four dollars and $4 and $40 are two very different things. So we're going to put 40 decimal zero, 00. Whenever you have to add a decimal to the end of a number, we just throw on two zeros behind it. Zero, 00. Okay, so that's how much money Henry had. $40. Super rich guy, Henry. Then, Henry starts spending. What is the first thing that Henry decides to buy? Jadine, what's that first thing that Henry decides to buy? His rich guy money. A soccer ball. Okay, and how much does the soccer ball cost him? $14.64. Okay, so I'm going to put an S underneath this smaller box for soccer ball. And I'm going to put $14.64. Now, Henry doesn't just buy a soccer ball. What else does Henry buy? Christopher? A water bottle. He buys a water bottle. How much is the water bottle going to cost him? $7.55. Okay, I'm going to put a W for water bottle. And then 7 decimal 5 5. This last part is how much money he has at the end, right? So we don't know. I don't know how much money he's going to have. But what can I do to figure out how much money he's going to have? Jadine, what could I do? You can add 14.64 and $7.50 together and then subtract $40. So I could add the two things he bought, the soccer ball and the water bottle together, and then I can subtract. And that will tell me how much money he'd have left. Let's try it out. Okay, so I'm gonna add the soccer bottle, or sorry, not the soccer bottle, oh, the soccer ball and the water bottle. I was trying to add the words, not the numbers. Before I start adding, what's the first thing I need to make sure I do? First thing I need to make sure I do whenever I'm trying to add or subtract decimals. Bailey? I need to line up your decimals. I need to line up my decimals. So I'm going to do that. See? Asking politely. All right. Let's try. One decimal for the soccer ball. One decimal for the water bottle. And one decimal for my answer. The soccer ball. 
was fourteen dollars sixty four cents. The water bottle was seven dollars fifty five cents. Let's add. Four plus five. Alexa, what's four plus five? Four plus five is nine. Okay, nine. Six plus five. Kylie, six plus five is? Eleven. Eleven. Okay, I'm going to put a one and carry over a one. Four plus seven is? Bella? Eleven, but you have to add them one, so it's twelve. Very good job, Bella. Four plus eleven, or sorry, four plus seven should be eleven, but you're right. Since we carried over a one, it's not eleven anymore, it's twelve. And what's one plus one? Bailey? You called me, right? Mm hmm One plus one is two. Two. Okay. So, that's how much he spent. $22.19. Is this my answer? Violet, is this my answer? Yes. So I can stop here? I don't have to do anything else? No. You have to subtract now. Now I've got to subtract. What am I going to subtract with? What number should I use? You should use 40, 40, um, de 40 decimal. You should say point or decimal, either one. 40.00. Okay, so let's and do that. And what do I have to do, Violet, every time I add or subtract? You have to line up your decimals. Line up my decimals. Let's do that. So Violet said, I want to put a decimal for 40.00. I want to put a decimal for 22.19. Put a decimal for my answer. 40.00 minus 22.19. Okay. Zero minus nine. What's zero minus nine? Bella. You can't do that, so you have to borrow from the tens. Okay, I gotta go all the way to the tens place. What's gonna happen, Bella? Then you turn it into a three, and then you put the zero into a ten. Which zero? Um, the ones. Okay. And then what do I do? So that that um wants the cents. So I put the ten all the way over here. Mhm. Mm I can just skip all the other place values. Can I? Would that be fair to them? To just skip them, go all the way over here, and then go all the way back, and just forget the ones in the middle? No. No, that won't be fair. I have to put the 10 here, but then how do I get numbers back here to my my hundredths? Um, so you take the 10 and you turn it into a 9. Okay. Then you put it into the 1. But here's the 1s. I have the tenths and the hundredths. Hundredths. So can I skip over the tenths? No. No, that wouldn't be fair, right? It's got to go to the tenths first. What's going to happen to the tenths? It turns into a ten. Okay. And then? You take the ten and turn it into a nine, and then you put it into the hundred. Okay. So that's another good note we can add.
you can't skip place values when you borrow you can't do it it wouldn't be fair to just skip around to different place values and borrow from some and not others now that we're here Bella what is 10 minus 9 1 1 all right what's 9 minus 1 18? 9 minus 1 mm -hmm. oh sorry it's 8 What's nine minus two? Kylie? It's seven. Seven? And what's three minus two? Violet? One. One. Violet, is this my answer? Yes. Yes. This is how much money Henry would have after buying his soccer ball, after buying his water bottle. That's what he would have left. $17.81.